Mick Schumacher has managed to bag himself one of the biggest gigs in Formula 1, outside of actually driving a car. Signing on as Mercedes reserve driver opens up a wealth of options for him, and also sees him follow in his father's footsteps. In fact, there is a good chance he could be driving on the team soon. But which driver would he replace? Or will his path take him elsewhere? Let's see if we can work it out. After all the praise that Toto Wolff has been laying on Mick, it shouldn't be too surprising that the team have signed him up as their reserve driver for 2023. He'll take the place of Nick De Vries, who'll be driving at Alpha Tauri next season. Mick's move to Mercedes after his unplanned retirement from the sport is very similar to his father's and definitely won't help him escape from his dad's shadow anytime soon. The team announced his appointment after Ferrari confirmed his departure after four years with the team. He had been in the Ferrari Youth Academy before they mutually decided not to extend their collaboration, after working together for four years with Mick having been a part of the Ferrari Driver Academy. Mercedes picking up an old Ferrari driver? Again, another link to Michael. Ferrari's farewell message was completely devoid of emotion, just listing his seasons on the team, followed by Scuderia Ferrari thanks Mick for these four years and the many kilometers covered together, and wishes him all the best for the future. Not exactly an outpouring of appreciation, is it? The 23-year-old made his debut as a Formula 1 driver with Haas in 2021, but was dropped after two seasons at the team. In his new role at Mercedes, Schumacher will attend all F1 races and contribute to the development of the team's W14 chassis through simulator work. Schumacher said he is making a new start at the team. F1 is such a fascinating world and you never stop learning, so I look forward to absorbing more knowledge and putting in all my effort for the benefit of the Mercedes team. Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff described Schumacher as a talented young driver and we're delighted to have him join the team. He's a hard worker, he has a calm and methodical approach, and is still hungry to learn and improve as a driver. These are all important qualities and we're excited for him to help us develop the W14. By the sounds of things, Toto is eager to have Mick in the simulator to help develop the car, but will he ever get a shot in the Mercedes? The last time Mercedes needed a stand-in, George Russell replaced Lewis Hamilton in 2020 at the Sakir Grand Prix. It does happen on occasion. 2022 saw two reserve drivers get a chance to show what they can do. Both of them have a race seat in 2023 as well, so maybe this is Mick's route back to the grid. So what does he have to offer Mercedes? Mick's first season was largely wasted in a slow and underdeveloped car alongside fellow rookie Nikita Mazepin. But when Haas produced a more competitive machine this year, Schumacher did not capitalize on it as successfully as his experienced new teammate. Kevin Magnussen outscored Schumacher by 25 points to 12 this year. Schumacher also suffered heavy crashes at Jeddah and Monaco, as well as a sizable shunt at the end of the practice in Suzuka. Those crashes cost Haas roughly $5 million in repairs the equivalent of the entire development budget for an F1 team over the year. That is a problem, but some more experience in F1 cards should see him lose his pension for huge crashes. Some time in the Mercedes simulator is probably exactly what the doctor ordered. There are other advantages to being at Mercedes as well. Schumacher will not only be working with a world-class team, he will also get to work with seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton, something that could make the 23-year-old a better driver. Wolf will also likely support Schumacher's big to get a seat somewhere in 2024, meaning that a year on the bench in Mercedes is certainly not a bad thing at all. Wolf might have plans to have Schumacher drive for his own team as well. Mick is a talented young driver and we're delighted to have him join the team, said Wolf. He's a hard worker, has a calm and methodical approach, and is still hungry to learn and improve as a driver. These are all important qualities, and we're excited for him to help us develop the W14. We also know that with two years of experience racing in Formula 1 under his belt, he'll be ready to step into the car at short notice to replace either Lewis or George, should that need arise. Clearly, Toto has a very high opinion of Schumacher. If Mick can perform in the Mercedes simulator, then Mick's stock will only rise in Wolf's eyes. So what are the options for Mick? Well, both Mercedes drivers are out of contract in the next couple of years. Lewis Hamilton's contract is done at the end of 2023, and despite all the talk of him signing an extension, the seven-time champion has a whole host of other interests outside of Formula 1 that are going to be taking more and more of his time. George Russell's contract only runs until 2024 as well. Whether that gets extended or not could depend on Lewis's long-term plans. A quick look at Mercedes history will remind you that the team do not want two drivers both fighting for a world championship. 
In 2016, Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg almost tore the team in half and aged Toto Wolff 10 years with their on-track battles. Toto has constantly said that he does not want that to happen to his team again. If Mercedes do produce a good car in 2023, like a lot of people are predicting they will, then George and Lewis could be fighting each other for a title. Hamilton definitely isn't going to accept team orders to help George win points and titles. George might sound soft in his interviews, but he definitely isn't going to give up the chance of a first world championship title. No driver ever does. That first one just makes them fight twice as hard. So 2023 could be a year of internal conflict for Mercedes, which is perfect for Mick. Scenario 1 is that Lewis decides to not extend his contract in the winter and maybe wait to see if Mercedes can produce a title-challenging car. If the team can't, then the next chance might not be until the new technical regulations in 2026. He doesn't want to wait that long, so he retires at the end of 2023 and Mick gets a new seat. Scenario 2 is that Lewis extends his contract over the winter. Mercedes build a good car and George and Lewis can fight for a title, but just end up fighting each other. That is going to happen if they make a good car, by the way. Mercedes end up with a Rosberg vs Hamilton situation. Toto Wolff loses his mind in anger and decides to end George's contract a year early, and Mick gets his seat. Scenario 3 is that Lewis signs a contract. Merck builds a good car, but George then beats him to the title. I know a lot of you don't want to imagine a world where that happens, but it might. Hamilton then decides that his time at Merck has run its course. He moves teams or retires, and then there is Mick again, in a Mercedes seat for 2023. Whatever happens, signing Mick up as a reserve driver gives Toto an option that he seems to have a lot of faith in, even if he doesn't need him. If he can't get into a Mercedes seat in 2024, though, Mick might be in trouble. Nico Rosberg thinks that if he can't get back on the grid in 2024, then he never will. While Rosberg, who was teammate to Mick's father Michael Schumacher and Mercedes from 2010 to 2012, does feel it was hard for Mick to shine in the Haas. He also believes that the 23-year-old showed a lack of consistency when it came to getting the best out of the machinery he had. This too was a criticism of Haas team boss Gunther Steiner. Plus, when there was an opportunity, Rosberg felt it was Kevin Magnussen taking it, not Schumacher. Speaking in a recent interview, Rosberg said, It was great to have Mick Schumacher on the grid and interesting to follow his performances in the Premier class. Unfortunately, it was extremely difficult for him because he had the worst car in the field for long stretches. It's difficult to set highlights there. Nevertheless, you have to compare him with Kevin Magnussen. There was a lack of consistency, and Magnussen was always there in those moments when the car gave something away. Mick lacked those peaks. Unfortunately, there will now be a break in his GP career for the time being. And how long this break lasts, according to Rosberg, will be key to whether we see Schumacher on the Formula 1 grid again. Rosberg feels the recently confirmed reserve spot at Mercedes is a good next step in Schumacher's career. But if it does not lead to a place on the 2024 grid, then he does not see how Schumacher will make that return. Reserve driver at Mercedes, that's a good option to stay in F1 and keep the chances of coming back somewhere in 2024, said Rosberg. But Schumacher would also need a good sponsor to support him financially in his comeback to the grid. If nothing comes of it in 2024, then that would probably be the end with Formula 1. Mick is a good racing driver who made some really, really bad mistakes in his two seasons in Formula 1. Even if he doesn't make it back onto the Formula 1 grid, he'll have a great career driving elsewhere in the world. But will that be good enough for him? Do you think Mick will take the place of one of the Mercedes drivers, or will he end up elsewhere on the grid in 2024? Let us know your opinion in the comments down below, and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.